this, this is all really lovely and nice. It gets there very, very quickly, except it's got a teeny little problem with it, which is when you have a look at a situation like this. So this is example one over here. If you haven't already drawn example two, which I've unceremoniously written over with my other formulas, what's the problem that's going to present itself to you when you have a look at this situation and you're looking for this angle? Hmm. I'm going to let someone else have a turn, Erin, because you've been participating so well. I want you all to have a think. Hmm. If I were to look at this question and then launch into my formula, you will run into a problem really quick smart. Erica, what do you say? Yeah, very good. So, Eric is exactly right. This approach over here kind of relies on finding what alpha and beta are and then kind of feeding that into, now note this, feeding it into tan. Now tan is the only one of the trig functions, sine, cos, etc., the basic ones, that has asymptotes on it. I know all the reciprocals have asymptotes because that's because they're reciprocals, but tan has a discontinuity at 90 degrees. So therefore, if you take tan of that, you're kind of in trouble. But that's all right. We have another way. If you just look at the diagram, we can work this out. If that's 90 degrees, or I should, we should stop saying 90 degrees, by the way. We should say instead that's pi on 2. Okay? Then the angle I'm interested in is even easier to get than all of this. Okay? If we call this guy alpha, look at the diagram. I haven't, admittedly, I haven't done the greatest job. I haven't made that triangle very large there. But think about the relationship between theta and alpha. It's vertically opposite here, right? Both of these are theta, yeah? Are you okay with that? You've got this pi on two, a really small pi on two, in there in the triangle. So tell me what kind of triangle that is, the small one. It's a right angled triangle. So therefore, the two angles, other than the pi on two, what's the relationship between them? What must they add to? They must add to, say it again. No, 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 say it again. They add to pi on 2, right? They're complementary, OK? So therefore, I can just go straight to saying theta equals pi on 2 minus alpha. It's the complement, OK? So instead of going through this road, right, where it's the difference here, I can just say, I, I know what this is. Let's, I actually have space for it this time. In this case, tan theta is going to be equal to the absolute value of tan of, in this case, pi on 2 minus alpha. Now, I went to all the effort to point out that they're complementary. They're complementary, this theta that I'm after, and the alpha that I can work out through normal trig. Okay? But remember, some of the, not some, half of the trig ratios you know about are defined by being a complementary relationship. Do you remember that? Do you remember how there's sine and there's cos, which are both abbreviations, right? <clears throat> sine, which is abbreviation for sine, and cos, which is an abbreviation for cosine, cosine meaning it's the complement of sine, right? Well, we have one for tan as well. What's the complementary identity? It's cot, right? Like so. That's, that's what it means. Cotan. It's the complement of tan. Except you guys would probably remember meeting it as the reciprocal of tan, which it also is. So it's one on tan alpha, yeah? So this one is even easier than all of this because I know what tan alpha is, it's just one of the gradients, right? In this case it would be, we're going to find this out in a second, in this case it would be a half, okay? So my formula, generally speaking, is just that. There you go, that's nice, right? It gave us a problem because it doesn't work with the original one, but thankfully the replacement for it is nice and simple. So in this particular example, example two, what is our theta going to be? We're going to get tan theta being the absolute value of 1 on a half. Yeah? So this is the absolute value of 2. So what theta do you get? In radians, please. Can I get a couple of decimal places? 1.11. Again, it should be, you know, an acute angle because I've put these absolute value signs in. So I'm in the first quadrant. Looks happy to me, and it's of course a smaller angle than that because you can see we've sort of twisted this line a bit over, so it's made the angle smaller. Are you happy with that? 
So I'm going to um, pop some questions up for 14E shortly. Before I do that, though, I want to make one final note. Um, Mrs. Lee's gave you uh, one out of the many reasons why. When we get to this point here, here, and here, I actually like to write, just because I'm kind of, I don't trust myself, I actually like to write the letters R-A-D, just to remind myself, I've put, that's an angle, it's, that's the answer, and um, as Mrs. Lee's pointed out, the symbol for radians is a terrible symbol. Um, it, yeah, it's, <clears throat> it looks so similar, no, just don't do it, okay? So I, I, when I want to indicate that it's, it's that, I'll, I'll write the words. However, just like here, and in exams and in textbooks and that kind of thing, you will see it provided without units. Now, there are lots of reasons why that is. Mrs. Lee's already gave you one because radians are just, are just better, okay? But I want to give you another one. So just underneath where you've done this, can you just draw for me a little circle? Because it's really nice to know all the reasons why something is the case and it's just not because someone decided, oh, I like this rather than the other one. Some bits and maths are like that, but most of them, mercifully, are not. So here's what I want you to draw on your circle. I'm going to ask you to draw a single radian, one radian in the middle there. It's going to look something like that, roughly. It's about 57.3 degrees. Okay. But once you've drawn that, I need you to think about what a radian actually is. What is a radian? What's, what's your definition for that? Okay. Now, we haven't done too much thinking about this, so I'm going to try and give you the simplest definition I can, and hopefully it will explain why there's um, no, no units hanging down the end here. Okay. Here's my definition for you. I'm going to draw it, and then I'm going to say it. Okay. There's one radian there. What makes it one radian is this. If this is the radius of your circle, then this arc over here, subtended by one radian, is also the radius. Okay? Let me say that again. One radian is the angle such that the radius of your circle is exactly the same as the length of the arc that you get from that angle. That's what one radian means. That's its definition. Okay? So how does this explain what's going on? Well, do you remember you did some um, you did some formulas with radian measure before, right? You should have two or three in the back of your head. Which is the one that connects the radius to an arc? Do you remember what the formula is? L equals R theta. It's one of those beautiful, simple formulas in all of mathematics, and it's a very profound relationship, right? Now I want you to see what happens when we apply it to this situation. Just think about it for a second, right? If I say the length of the arc is the same as the radius, then you get this. R equals R theta, right? Do you, do you see what's going on here? Now we know, because I just defined it this way, that you're going to get 1. But this is what I want you to notice. 1 what? I know this seems redundant. But if you see the relationship here, right? How big does this circle look to you? Just actually estimate. How, how big do you think the radius is? Can you make an estimate? 10? 10? 15? Something like that? Okay. So if this is like 15 centimeters divided by 15 centimeters, what happens to the units? They, they cancel, right? We've seen what happens if you have like a, a speed or something like that. We measured that in, you know, I was going 110 kilometers in one hour. So we call that kilometers per hour. That's the unit, right? But here, you know, suppose we had a much bigger circle. Suppose it was like meters wide, okay? Well, you'd have meters divided by meters. And then again, they cancel, right? However big, your, whatever size circle you get, radians are in fact not a unit at all. They're a ratio between two identical lengths, right? And ratios don't have units. That's kind of the point of a ratio. A rate is comparing different units. A ratio is comparing the same ones. It doesn't have units. So radians are kind of unique in that way. Unlike every other measure of size that you have in the entire mathematics course, radians are actually what we call a dimensionless unit. Um, they, have no, they have no dimensions. They're, they're not meters. They're not centimeters or anything like that. Um, and they're certainly not degrees. So that's why we don't write the symbol. That's kind of like the philosophical reason why. By the way, just to let you know, the other thing that's new 
since we did angle between two lines, the other thing that's new is that not only do you know what radians are, you also know calculus now, right? So what it's going to start giving you, just so I briefly look up, I apologize I didn't draw this before, I should have. What you're going to get is something that looks like this, for instance. They tell you about a graph and they say, here is a straight line. And they'll ask you to find the angle between that straight line and the acute angle with this parabola. And you're like, wow, <laughs> how does that work? Well, if you're interested in this angle here, right, one of the things we know from calculus is that this parabola at that specific point, for an infinitesimally small moment, it behaves exactly like it's tangent, right? That's how Newton's method works. It's like, well, the curve isn't a straight line, but for a brief split second, it looks like a straight line, okay? In fact, that's what calculus is about. So you can approximate that parabola with the tangent at that point, which you couldn't do before. So you'll see in a bunch of these questions, they'll ask you not just between the angle, the angle between two straight lines, but the angle between a straight line and the curve. So you need to turn that curve into a comparable straight line, okay?